My name is Brett. Um, I always start my videos off the same way. I'm not an expert. I'm not professing to be an expert. Just hope to share uh, some information about my experience with garter snake keeping and um, hopefully some of this information proves useful for others. Uh, that said, there have been a few requests for uh, some videos on the recent litter of plains garter snakes that I had. So here we go. Uh, let me introduce you to Big Blue. This is the female who most recently had her litter. She's uh, a 2017 baby, right? So she's about three years old. And you can see she's pretty good size. She's normal, meaning she's not a visual morph, right? So she's normal. And her and the, and the sire are both possible clawed heads. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the person who bred these snakes, whose name was Thomas Hamilton, um, bred these snakes for about six years to combine, uh, very thoughtfully, combine the right pets and visuals to lead up to a male and female pair that carry, possibly carry four genes. So when you're breeding um, any animals for, the, for that matter, but, but garter snakes, and you're talking about hets, whether they be a het for one gene or double hets, triple hets, quadruple hets like these are, um, it's a, a bit like scratch off uh, lottery tickets in that you don't know exactly what you're going to get. And in some cases, you don't know exactly what you have until you, what we call, prove out those genes. So when I acquired these snakes again they were sold to me as quad head possible quad head so i paired this dam and i'll show you the sire in a moment uh together to see what we what we would get and i'll show you that in a few minutes okay so let me go grab the sire all right so this is jake very original right jake the snake uh, jake is also a uh, a radix or plains garter snake of course He's a 2018, so uh, not only is he smaller because he's a year younger, but he's also smaller because he's a male, okay? Um, I should have showed, shown you the belly on the female, but, but you can visually inspect garter snakes and tell whether they're male or female to a pretty, to a, I'll say a reasonably high accuracy, especially larger snakes like this. When they're teeny tiny babies, it's pretty tough, but uh, as they get more mature, it's a little easier to tell. Uh, but the males from their cloaca to the tip of their tail is a little longer, typically, and it's it's more um, subtle. The, the taper is more subtle. In a female, it tapers very fast. Um, maybe I'll show that in a moment, too. But this is Jake, so he's the sire of these babies, and um, he did a great job. So we'll see what the results were. All right, so before I start showing some babies here in a minute, let me share a few thoughts. So unless you have produced these adults yourself, there's going to be speculation, there's going to be doubt, there's going to be some haters out there that tell you you don't have what you think you have, and that's okay, right? Uh, when I invested in these snakes, I, I knew that there was some risk. They look visually normal, so the male and female could literally just be normal and never produce any kind of morph. So I trusted the breeder, I trusted the, uh, the history of the breeder, and I made an investment in these adults. In fact, I, I picked up three adult females from that breeder and the one male, Jake. So I hope to produce more great babies. So again, it's a little bit like scratch off lottery tickets, right? So, you know, you, you breed the two together and you wait and you cross your fingers and you hope. And so the, so the night that I came in, it was, a, it was a Thursday evening, came into the room and I saw babies in there. I was super excited. And immediately I could tell they weren't all normal. So that was really all I was hoping for was that we'd get something other than normal babies. So I'll, uh, I'll show you what the whole litter looks like here in a second. Um, but now I want to talk with you about the different morphs that were produced by this combination. Okay, so let's start with the genes in, in this particular pairing. Again, both of the adults, the dam and the sire, were... Uh, presented as possible quad head, okay? Those four genes are albino, melanistic, which some call anery, so don't get that confused. Melanistic and anery and radix are the same thing, okay? So albino, melanistic, 
black and white exanthic, I'll explain that in a moment, and blue exanthic. Those are the four possible genes, right? So when you breed them, you're looking for those individual visuals, and you're also looking for combinations of those visuals. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you have uh, two snakes that both carry the genes for albino and melanistic, you could produce a snow, okay? If you have, if both the dam and the sire have albino and black and white exanthic or blue exanthic, the blue exanthic combo creates a blizzard and the black and white exanthic with albino produced a first in the world, I'm proud to say, what we're calling an avalanche. We're gonna show you that, we're excited, okay? So the, it's not just the single genes, it's the combination of those single genes that can make some additional morphs. They're called double visuals and you can even produce, a few people have produced triple visuals, meaning three different genes are expressed in one animal. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff. So I'm not a genetics uh, expert. Again, I'm gonna share with you the information that I believe to know to be factual to the best of my ability. Um, please nobody be a hater and if I make any mistakes, feel free to put comments in. Uh, I'm trying to learn myself, okay? So let's dig into these individuals. All right, so the first I wanna show you is this little baby here. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. This little baby is a visually normal possible quad head, okay? So it's just like its parents. It looks like a normal radix. A uh, normal radix has a pattern on the side and has a yellow to orange stripe, dorsal stripe, okay? This is a visually normal possible head baby, okay? So when you, when you breed these, uh, there's something called a Punnett square. If you haven't looked into that before, just Google it. There's lots of videos and lots of information about how that works. But the odds are, of course, because both the dam and the sire were both het, visually, uh, visually normal heads, my percentage chance to get visuals was relatively low, except I had four different genes potentially to show up in the mix, okay? So out of 24 babies, I got 11 that look like this. Visually normal possible heads, okay? That's what that, that one is. All right, guys, so next I wanna show you uh, a melanistic, okay? So again, some people call this an anery, same thing, melanistic and anery are the same thing in a, in a radix, okay? So what you're seeing here is an almost all black snake. Upon very close inspection, you will see that the pattern actually does show up but it's, um, it's really dark, it's hard to see, okay? The dorsal stripe also, very hard to see, but it's there, okay? Really pretty little babies, I love these. These are some of my favorites. So again, these are melanistic T. radix. Um, I got five of these, right? 24 total babies, five of these. Um, I didn't sex them yet, but those are really cool, right? All right. Let's show you the next one. All right, this next morph is a black and white exanthic. Now this is similar in some ways to the last one, the melanistic, but, but different. You can clearly see that, that this uh, is not nearly as dark, number one, but it almost looks like a black and white photo of a normal T. radix, okay? So, it's shades of gray. The, the dorsal stripe is almost silver. It's beautiful, love this guy. Um, these are really cool. And I think I actually might have a double visual of one of these and, and a, and a uh, melanistic combined, but I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. So what happens is as these grow and they shed, they start to express um, their colors and their patterns more and more and more as they grow and uh, again, more sheds. So there's a couple in, in this litter actually that might be melanistic and black and white visuals. I don't, I don't know that they've been produced before. Maybe they have and they're just hard to tell from a melanistic or a black and white exanthic, but they do, I do have a couple that look different. But um, I would say that this is probably my second favorite of the group. Um, really cool little guy, don't you think? All right. Okay, so before I grab the next one, I wanted to just clarify some differences between what you've seen so far, right? So first you saw the, the normal, 
It looks like a normal T. radix. Then we looked at the melanistic or anery. Okay, now remember what that has is an abundance of melanin, which means that you can barely see the pattern because there's so much melanin, which is the black pigment, that it just blacks everything out. It's kind of like uh, when people tint their windows on their car. You can still see through, but the window tint often is so dark that basically what you see is a black window. That's very much what melanistic's about, okay? Um, black and white exanthic is different. Black and white exanthic is much a much brighter snake, right? The pattern shows much clearer. The dorsal stripe shows much more clear, um, but it's lacking the yellows and oranges and reds that are in a normal, um, in a normal T. radix color scheme. Okay, so what you see again looks like a black and white photo of a, uh, a normal T. radix. Okay, so now what I want to show you is an albino. Now, a couple things that are about that interesting about albinos is that they're so light in color that right now what you'll see is darkness in the body and that's the food <laughs> that's inside this snake. So this snake ate yesterday and still has some food inside of it that it needs to pass. But this is an albino T. radix. Really pretty, it's got a bright stripe down, it, down its back. Um, I've got to do a little better inspection on this, uh, on these. I, um, some of these I'm being told by the experts are what are called high binos, which is a, a much brighter version of an albino. And I've just got to let them shed. Only 11 of the 24 have shed for their second time. So I'm gonna let them shed again and get better uh, close-up inspection there to figure out which are high binos and which are regular albinos. But these are really pretty little snakes, very popular. Everybody loves these. Um, Great, great little snakes. Now, here's a cool thing. Let me reach back in here and get the melanistic. If you combine these two, right, you can get a snow. Um, I didn't get any live snows. I had three stillborns in this, um, in this pairing, in this litter. There were three stillborns. Two of them, appear, one appeared to be a snow. It looked pretty clearly to be a snow. The other one was either a snow or a blizzard or an avalanche. It's, it's hard to tell. They were uh, not very well formed, and by the time they were passed and I found them, they were uh, not looking so hot. So um, anyway, again, when you, pair, when you combine, when the genes combine in one animal for albino and melanistic, it expresses as snow. And snow radix are almost pure white. Basically, you won't see very much pattern at all in them. You won't see much of a dorsal stripe, just really, really, really faint, okay? The black kind of, remember, you can barely see the pattern in the melanistic, right? So when you combine that and create a snow, it's the same kind of effect. You can barely see the pattern and it's largely a white animal, okay? I should have said before, 24 babies, five were melanistic, five were albino, two were black and white exanthic, and one was this one. So this is a combination of an albino and a black and white exanthic. If this combo was albino with blue exanthic, that would create a blizzard. Those are few and far between, but they, they are being produced. There's a, there's a handful of people in the U.S. that are producing these, some in Europe as well, of the blizzards. Again, blue exanthic and albino. This one is believed to be the first produced, what we call an avalanche. Again, combination of albino and black and white exanthic. Um, I've not sexed this one yet, and I'm just being ultra careful with them. I suspect it's a male. It's uh, a little smaller than the rest of the babies, not the, not all of them, but a little smaller than the biggest babies in this litter, which leads me to believe that it might be a male. Its tail looks a little bit elongated uh, as in terms of a ratio to the cloaca, but we'll see. Give, give it a little bit of time to grow up. I, also, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a dark spot right there. That's its heart. Isn't that cool? So we're really in love with this little, this little noodle here. Um, anxious to see it grow up. So that so that's the litter. Uh, okay, so eleven normals, 
visually normal hats, possible hats, right? Five melanistic, five albino, a couple of those albinos, maybe high binos, two black and white exantics, and one avalanche. So thanks for the requests. If there's anything else you guys would like to hear about, um, I love sharing my experiences, so just let me know. Please put your uh, comments in below and subscribe. Thanks.